This is gonna be a mix of like uh, IP based shows like stuff from some some stuff from Nickelodeon to straightforward games that will never be possible to ever come out and then also some that are like kind of possible but I, I don't think Nintendo would or America would accept. Thank you guys so much for allowing me into your home for this video. It looks great. I definitely think you need to fix some of those drapes and I think you should definitely get rid of the fridge and I don't know if I'm okay with the color scheme or any of the things here. But you know, I'm just coming from YouTube. You know, what do I know? I can only see from up here. So today, if you're a Nintendo fan or a Nickelodeon fan or just a 2000s fan in general, Johnny 2000 has got quite the treat for you. I am going to tell you guys about all these games that will probably never happen, but it would be cool if they did. It's an opportunity for me to show off what I think would be really good. And I, if you guys agree with me, I would love for you to like, re-comment, subscribe. I'll have like a port in here because I want you guys to kind of see like a fun example. Um, and then, you know, some of my own personal ideas. So I, I mean, just tune in and we'll see what we got. A Super Smash Brothers Melee port could bring the classic GameCube fighter to modern consoles like Nintendo Switch or the next system, Switch 2, and we could retain the core gameplay that fans love while introducing new features to enhance the experience. They never ported Smash Brothers before, and I'm sure there's a bunch of legal issues that go with it. However, it's fun to fantasize about, and I could imagine if they did do this, how well it would do, or how underwhelming it would do. You know, th that's not the point. So the point is, Here's what it would look like if it did happen. So what we would keep is like the faithful gameplay mechanics. Like the gameplay would remain nearly identical to the original Melee, in including having a GameCube controller be accessible. Like we don't have to smooth out the actual gameplay because that's a part of its core. Nintendo would have to maintain exactly how it was before. The fast paced action, tight controls and the frame data intact would be like crucial for the competitive community that has kept the game alive for decades. The physics and mechanics such as like the wave dashing, L canceling and short hop aerials would definitely need to be preserved. What we would add would be like an HD remaster, like Melee could have a visual upgrade with remastered HD graphics, smoother animations and improved textures all while maintaining the original gameplay mechanics. Maybe even 60 frames per second, like ensure a lot more reactive gameplay and it could be just like the original just higher resolution and obviously the audio can be enhanced like maybe we can get an improved soundtrack the same way paper mario and the thousand year door did like they didn't change the game entirely they just made it a lot more fun to play for the first time again and i don't see an issue with nintendo putting that out maybe additional surround sound or hd audio to give it a more immersive experience and just putting it in full screen mode but we can have some new features like online play, rollback netcode, like one of the biggest features could add a robust online playing. Using rollback netcode, which is a system that ensures smoother online matches with minimal input lag, making it a competitive friendly for all the global audience. So anybody in any place can play this online. We could have like ranked and casual playlists, like players could choose between ranked matches where they can climb leaderboards, casual matches for fun. Uh, like just a bunch of different, you could do global leaderboards, track your performance against other players worldwide, and have those options for both one-on-one -on -one and free-for-all matches. Oh, and then even like an enhanced training mode, like a hitbox or hurtbox displays, frame data breakdown, slow motion, an option to set custom AI behavior to practice specific techniques. That would be kind of fun. And then we could do like combo practice, like where you can actually practice the different combo strings or drills to perfect the combos and movement. Oh, and it would be so cool to be able to play story mode and tournament mode with all these new graphics. So much fun to be able to go run through the maze or the Mario world with just looking slightly better. I have like a spectator mode, like a built-in spectator mode where players can watch live matches, follow tournament streams, or even participate in audience members with the ability to vote for their favorite players. I, I mean, I know that would be a lot, but it would be fun. Maybe introduce eight player Smash, bring the option to play with eight players, similar to Super Smash Ultimate, but adapted for Melee's physics and mechanics. Maybe some customizable rule sets, more extensive range of customizable rules. I know we had a decent amount in the original Melee. All the updated ones that are in the new iterations could be brought back to that. We could have expanded stage options, maybe bring back some, take off the items, like more tweaks 
that we can have. Maybe, speaking of tweaks, maybe some character balance tweaks. Like, like many of the original fans prefer the original ca character balance, but an optional setting for uh, toggling minor balance adjustments for characters to make the roster more evenly matched. I think the community would love that. Expanded character skins, like more cosmetic options, like different colored Yoshis, alternate color schemes, costumes, even completely new skins for existing characters would be fun. Um, and then expand the single player content. Melee's adventure mode with new levels, challenges, maybe even bosses, like sub levels for iconic franchises could be added, making adventure mode longer and even more rewarding. Maybe even have an all-star mode enhancement where there's new enemies or waves, along with extra unlockables, new statues, when you complete more achievements in the game. And then more unlockables, like Splatoon, Animal Crossing, Xenoblade, collectible trophies that you could actually earn that would add new adjustments. I know Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door did add a couple of new gameplay features, Thousand Year Door remake, so I don't see why they couldn't do it here, especially if that's what they do with GameCube routes. Quality of life enhancements, just overall, like, like faster menus, replay, saving and sharing, and global stats and achievement, that would just be all fun. Overall, like a Super Smash Brothers Melee port would be the ultimate way to preserve and modernize this beloved classic, where we can keep keep the gameplay mechanics and core experience intact while still upgrading some things like the online play, graphical improvements, and quality life updates. And it could appeal to both hardcore fans and the original game. But you know what? We're gonna end on just saying this is never going to happen. <laughs> This is would be like the ultimate form of what Nicktoons Unite attempted to do. Like it just felt like there was a hodgepodge of too many characters and situations going on that it wasn't easy to necessarily follow. But I feel like if we stick to the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour, that's two franchises that will have enough weight on their own, but coming together would make a really good game. Oh, a Jimmy Timmy Power Hour video game would be like an exciting blend of the Fairly Odd Parents and the adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, obviously. Um, combining elements from both shows could create a fun, action-packed crossover adventure. And this is like what I'm thinking the game could look like. It could start out with Timmy Turner and Jimmy Neutron causing a rift between their worlds, leading the chaos as characters from Dimsdale and Retroville get mixed up. Timmy's magic, Jimmy's science collide, and they have to team up in order to restore both worlds or permanently merge. Players could switch between Timmy and Jimmy, and they could tackle specific problems to each world. Some gameplay features could be like players can alternate between controlling Timmy and Jimmy, with each character having their own unique abilities, kind of like the way the Nicktoons Unite games were, but like a little bit more limited. Timmy uses his fairly odd parents and temporary wishes that perform magic-based attacks, and Jimmy can rely on inventions and gadgets to solve puzzles and combat enemies. So between the wishes and gadgets, Timmy's section, the player could choose from a limited number of wishes and or even change the environment. In Jimmy's parts, the player could use gadgets like shrink rays, hoverboards, and Goddard the robot dog to overcome obstacles and fight enemies. And then uh, we could alternate between Dimsdale and Retroville, which with some stages blending the two, like it would be like a crossover. For example, we could have a boss battle where like Crocker uses Jimmy Neutron's inventions or Professor Calamitous attempts to control magic creatures from Timmy's world. The game can involve classic platforming mechanics as, such as jumping, gliding, solving puzzles by combining the magic and the technology. And for example, uh, Timmy could wish for a bridge in a certain section and Jimmy could build it in real time. And if we think about Zelda or Mario, like they do such a good job at this. We just need the Nickelodeon team to come together and do it, which will never happen. So I'm not holding my breath. Each world can end with a uh, boss battles. We have Calamitous or the Yokians getting their hands on Cosmo and Wanda's magic. That would be kind of cool. And the final battle could be a climax featuring Timmy and Jimmy combining their skills to stop a fusion of Crocker and Professor Calamitous, who have created a device that merges both worlds permanently. Players would need to quickly switch between characters and their respective abilities to win. And this would be kind of similar to how the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour 2 went when Calamitous and Jordan Bond Strangle combined, if you guys can remember that. And then we could have a multiplayer mode where there could be like local co-op where players can control Jimmy and Timmy respectively, allowing them to work together to solve problems a lot quicker and explore levels. The game's core feature could be the blend of 2D and 3D art styles to reflect the show's animation. I wonder if like in this day and age, it would be a lot easier than it would have been back then. I mean, 2D video games seem to be art wise, conceptually a little bit easier. So it would be interesting to see them both combine that in 3D. As the worlds blend, the art styles could shift dynamically, creating like unique visual moments. I mean, <laughs> obviously they'd have to put a lot of money into this, but 
it would be cool. Overall, a Jimmy Timmy Power Hour video game would offer a rich blend of platforming, puzzle solving, and action, bringing both Nickelodeon worlds to life in a creative way. Oh, and then we got another Mario Party GameCube collection. So this is never gonna happen. That's why I wanted to talk about it. But literally, I just want a Mario Party Superstars with the GameCube era. And I think we should keep the ga graphics and gameplay that makes uh, Mario Party that makes the Mario Party GameCube collection so unique. Like the original GameCube mechanics. It, it can be a collection with nostalgia and updated features like the same way they did Mario Party Superstars for fans of the series. We'll have remastered boards and mini games like all the boards from four, five, six, and seven or two from each could return in a fully remastered HD. Have some visuals, textures, and animations to bring the charm of these environments to life. Uh, and we can revisit like Toad's Midway Madness, Toy Dream, Towering Treetop, The Great Canal. There's so many. The same way Mario Party 4 allowed you to customize which individual mini games you get to play, I think we could bring back that feature and actually choose, pick and choose which mini games you want to play. They didn't do that in the Mario Party Superstars, but we could definitely do it here. Maybe some more mini game modes or some mini game modes like the bingo card from Mario Party 5 could come to the other games. Maybe like we could just have all the mini game modes back. I would say to add more, but honestly, like the ones they put out for these system would definitely do great. And then we could also bring back some of the GameCube era mechanics and gimmicks. Like, I don't know, like classic Mario Party. So for Mario Party 4, we have like mega and mini mushrooms would be something you could turn on or turn off to access specific board paths. Mario Party 5 could have the capsules and dream theme boards. The day and night cycle could come back or just be something optional for specific boards. Maybe the eight player mode that Mario Party 7 added could also be brought back. Or I mean, maybe we could add the mic mini games back. Like if we just have like a speaking into like the Switch or I don't know what Switch 2 would have. Um, and while each board can keep its signature mechanics, the collection could allow players to unify certain rules like adjusting the number of turns and choosing which bonus stars to include. Maybe we could have like a ranked mode. It could be added where like players compete in board games or mini game challenges to climb the leaderboards and earn ranks. Like a, like a highest score type thing. That would be a lot of fun. Full online integration, like just being able to do everything that the N64 did on Nintendo Online. And of course, just re-enhance the visuals and sound. Like I don't need to get into this too much, but obviously HD graphics, remastered soundtracks, Something that would be great all around for any of the titles I've suggested in this video. Like it would just, it would just be so necessary. I feel. Like. And same thing. Like we, we just want like a unified hub world, maybe like how Mar Super Mario Party did this really well. Something you could run around in, like with the character of Mario Party Six is open hub world. It's just a select screen, but if you could just somehow maneuver it, like even have a character to just go from you know, the toad house to the, the windmill would be nice, but you know, obviously that's just adding extra, but I would love something like that just to expand the quality of life in this game. We could have like a party pass, like players can unlock alternate costumes for characters, mini game modes, special board themes by completing challenges without doing a new board. You know, we can have incentives to make the old boards better. Maybe expand the roster a little bit, like have all the characters that were in the Collective GameCube series all in this game, which individually isn't super impressive, but if you have all of them across them, like they have a lot of really good characters. Maybe some remixed boards, like popular boards from older Mario Party titles can make a return if you really need it, but I feel like we have enough, enough stuff to draw from with these four Mario games. Ooh, maybe like an unlockable game history, like, like the collection of like museum mode. And then we could have like, kind of like what Kirby games do, like concept art, character models, and listen to soundtracks from older titles. That would be a lot of fun. Like maybe even trivia behind the scenes content. I think that would really be awesome. Achievements and leaderboards would be nice to add like a trophy or a badge system, following different tasks, like losing coins, most stars in the game, etc. Maybe even something around bonus stars that could be achieved. Overall, I think a GameCube collection could be like the ultimate Mario Party experience for longtime fans and newcomers. Um, especially with the new community that's starting to get nostalgic for GameCube stuff, it would be really nice to lean into that. It could deliver fun, chaos, and strategic gameplay that the original Mario Party GameCube titles added. And w w let's ensure these parties remain for years to come.
Uh, now close your eyes for a second, and let's imagine when you open them, I'm gone. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Now, yeah, they, it's making me think of the Danny Phantom video game, Going Ghost. So Danny Phantom video game could be like a supernatural, action-packed, adventure-filled game. And uh, this is something that I feel like could have been done so long ago, but all Danny Phantom games that have been released, like Urban Jungle, they they uh, they did like the bare minimum of what they needed to do. It's clear that since they were IP-based, they were working on a time crunch and not necessarily worried about the IP to make them good. But we can't forget about how interesting, you know, ghost powers could be in a video game. It's not super common for mainline games, but I feel like if Danny Phantom were to incorporate these, there wouldn't be a lot of competition in the IP based. It could even feature like ghost hunting, dimension hopping, and tons of epic battles. And more importantly, the ghost zone. Imagine the ghost zone as a hub world where you can go to all these different portals that take you to different worlds they've created within the show and you could actually fight based on that. The game could follow an original story where the powerful ghosts, like an alliance of the villains we know, like Skulker, Vlad Plasmius, Amber, they threaten to merge like the ghost zone with the human world. And Danny, as the half ghost hero, can travel between dimensions to stop the catastrophe. Maybe we could face some new enemies, puzzles, and obstacles. I mean, I'm a platformer player, so I'm always going to lean in that direction. The stakes can get higher as the lines between the ghost zone and the human world blur, similar to the Jimmy Toomey Power Hour one, but this will be all within the same universe. Uh, Danny can have a range of ghost abilities that players can unlock and upgrade. This is like the main mechanic of the game is to be able to be a ghost. Like you could have invisibility to sneak past enemies or through barriers, intangibility could face through walls and floors to access hidden areas or solve puzzles. Maybe a ghost ray, fire, ectoplasmic blasts to attack enemies and destroy objects. The ghostly whale from the famous, <laughs> from the famous future Danny episode, which is like a powerful area damaging scream that knocks enemies. But it could also drain Danny's energy, kind of like, you know, the crash ability in Kirby. And then there's flight, of course. Flight, you could do like free form flying to navigate the ghost zone and the human world kind of the way they do in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot which is a really it's a really good example of flying done right punches kicks and ghost powers in a fluid battle system like you could switch between ranged attack like ghost rays and close combat where Danny could pull off like an acrobatic move to dodge and strike um we could have like an energy management system where Danny's ghost abilities could drain energy and the player can manage it carefully. Like energy can be replenished by collecting ectoplasmic shards or or something from the defeated enemies to enhance the experience, I don't know. And then we could have like a lot of enemy variety. Like Danny could face off ghosts from both the ghost zone and the human world, like Skulker, Technus, Vlad Plasmius. It's like Luigi's Mansion if you could play as the ghosts. Yeah, I'm gonna let that sink in for a minute. Then we got open world exploration, of course. Like, I think this could be an open world game. Like, you could explore the hometown, complete side missions, kind of like that new SpongeBob game is trying to do. Like, you can interact with Sam, Tucker, Jazz, and respond to ghost alerts around the city. And then, of course, dive into the ghost zone, which would be awesome. We could have floating islands, hidden passageways, eerie environments. Danny can use his flight to get to hard-to-reach areas. And maybe if we have a system where it's like you unlock each ability at a time, you can go to different areas at different points of the game. That would be fun too. Since Danny must hide his ghost identity from people around Amity Park, the game could include st stealth segments where he avoids detection by ghost hunters or government agents. Like players would need to use invisibility or intangibility just to go through the regular hub world. And then between story missions, players could tackle side quests like rogue hunting ghosts, terrorizing Amity Park, or helping Sam Tucker and uh, jazz with tech problems or environmental causes. <laughs> I don't know what they do. Completing these could earn Danny new abilities, energy boosts, or even like secret areas. And obviously the, the game would feature a dark, slightly eerie aesthetic that captures the feel of the ghost zone, but with a vibrant cartoony look of Amity Park and Nickelodeon. The ghostly powers can be animated with bright glowing effects, making Danny's transformations like visually engaging. Overall, Danny video, a Danny Phantom video game would be one of the most underrated successes. It would be so fun to make a new video game series out of this property. And the game would be a must play for fans of the shows and anybody who loves supernatural action games. This one should be no surprise to you guys why I'm even putting it on this list. Challenge Showdown. Obviously this would never happen, but it's my favorite game so I have to talk about it. I mean, they, they've had video games in 
in the past before, which I think are very well done, especially in concept of the show. But if we kind of break those barriers, I think we can make an even more impressive game that involves Shengang Wu collecting, fighting enemies, and honing into your elemental powers. The game could follow like an original storyline with the balance of the world's uh, mystical forces is in danger to a new evil entity. Um, threatening to collect Shengang Wu to become the ultimate ruler of the world. And the Shaolin monks, Omi, Raimundo, Clay, and Kimiko, can actually travel across the globe. You can go to different sections to collect Shengang Wu. And then, obviously, we'll have the Heilin forces, including Jack Spicer, Wu Ya, Chase Young, and new villains to secure the Shengang Wu before they fall into the wrong hands. Maybe everybody has their own agenda and is trying to create their own Mala Mala Zhong or something. And along the way, the, the team could face intense rivalries, and of course, we have Shaolin showdowns. And then we could have like, character selection and abilities taken from the already existing games. Uh, something they did right is the character uniqueness. Like, like in the regular games, you know, Omi can manipulate water, like ranged attacks, tidal waves, ice-based defenses. Kimiko can use fireballs, flamethrowers, or fire barriers. And then you, Raimundo can summon tornadoes, perform aerial combos, and create uh, wind shields. And then uh, Clay could cause earthquakes, throw massive boulders, and create rock shields for defense. Each monk could have like a unique combat style. The DS was more of a, an adventure game where it was, you would enter a level, you'd get two or three Shengang Wu, no two. Two Shengang Wu, and then you would try to survive all the way up to the end, then you have a Shaolin Showdown. I love that style, I think we should keep that. But the combat in the PS2 game and Xbox 360 was a lot more fun. The only issue is you were stuck in a single location. So if we could take the location transitions of the DS game and add that to you know, the fun and combat of the PS2 and Xbox 360 games, I think it would actually end up being a really impressive game in general. And the, the core gameplay loop can revolve around the Shengang Wu, of course. Like, you can explore all these different places and, and go to these showdowns and get new Shengang Wu. Not new, but like, you know, Shengang Wu from the show. Like, Third Arm Sash, Tangled Webcomb, Sword of the Storm, Fist of Tebigong, anything. Players can strategically use the Shengang Wu during exploration, combat, and they can use it to actually puzzle solve. Maybe some Shengang Wu can actually be something you will always have access to, as well some you could choose just for the individual level. Maybe you're able to go to the vault in the Shaolin Temple and actually interchange the Shengang Wu in real time. One of the game's most exciting features could definitely be the dynamic showdowns, like you could have ex epic battles take place in unique arenas, like maybe we can see more examples from the showdowns in the show, like Truth or Lie, where you're on different balloons, like that would be fun to do. And then we could have like a martial art combat system, kind of like how both games did. It could be combining elemental powers, martial arts combos, and it could actually have like light and heavy attacks. Maybe you dash to avoid incoming strikes, unleash devastating super moves. Oh, and then maybe the infamous Dragon X Kume formation. Players could combine their unique elemental abilities for combo attacks. For instance, like Raymundo, Raymundo's wind and Kimiko's fire can have an increased effect on the environment. That would be fun. Everybody running around, some levels could be sprawling, allowing for free roaming exploration, but others could be more linear, um, focused on the fast paced action and combat. Players could collect experience points or Shengang Wu to actually upgrade the character's abilities. And as players collect more Shengang Wu, they can also like get stronger powers or combine them to create new abilities, kind of like the show did. In conclusion, like a Challenge Showdown video game would offer like action, strategy, and exploration. And even though it would never be possible, dot, 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 I definitely think it's worth considering. And we could turn games that already existed, take the best parts of them and actually make a really, really good new game. And I wish companies would care enough to do something like that. Oh, and I've been playing this a lot on my streaming. You can find it on my channel, but Super Mario Eclipse is the coolest game ever. It is a fan-made mod that is expanding upon the Super Mario Sunshine universe by adding extra areas, extra characters, and extra shine sprites to get. And they updated quality. Like, they essentially did make Super Mario Sunshine a sequel. I know they would never do this because it would almost like be borderline illegal, but if they ported Mario Eclipse to the console, I mean, it would be a bestseller. I, I, it, would, it would be a really big issue, but it would be a bestseller. And this game, I, I highly recommend it. I can't recommend it more. Um, I've had so much fun playing through all these levels, all the original levels and then all the new levels. And then the fact that they took away blue coins 
or the, or they made the blue coin counter. They made a lot more improvements that make the game overall just fun. Being able to do long jump again is also incredible. I just, I love this game. So please bring it to the Switch or the Switch 2. I don't know. That, it's not possible. I, I don't even like entertaining the idea because I don't want to get my hopes up, but please do it. Then we got a Kirby RPG. Oh, this would be like a fresh twist to the iconic series, adding deeper storytelling, character progression, and turn-based or real-time combat mechanics while maintaining the charm, creativity, and colorful worlds that Kirby's known for. Here's what the Kirby RPG might look like. People have been requesting this for quite some time. I know Ant Dude was a big a Kirby fan, and I love Kirby, and I especially love The Forgotten Land. It makes me really wonder, with all the new Mario RPGs coming out, like Mario RPG, the Thousand Year Door getting ported, it definitely shows that they're good at making an RPG, and we should start bringing that to the other popular franchises. The peaceful world of Dreamland could be thrown into chaos because of a dark force from another dimension, corrupting powerful beings and spreading disorder. To save Dreamland and its inhabitants, Kir Kirby must journey across different realms, maybe like Popstar, Planet Robobot, Dreamland, or maybe all the above. We can recruit allies, discover ancient powers, and actually confront the evil that swallows everything into the void. Maybe we could have like the crystal hearts instead of like the crystal shards, and Kirby could like collect these as powerful artifacts that can restore the balance. And then every time he encounters a boss like Meta Knight, King DDD, it could be like a more important story that kind of weaves this into the system. Mainly we want to do this for the turn-based system and the hybrid combat system. Kirby's done great video games so far, but the idea that we can have a unique twist on turn-based combat would be really fun. Like, for example, like the copy abilities in turn-based combat would be really cool. Like attack-based abilities, sword, fire, hammer, and then defense-based abilities, stone, shield. Like maybe Kirby can have more than one at a time. So when he enters battles, he can actually utilize any of them. And then maybe support abilities like, like the beam for status effect or the paracel for healing rain. And then you could also use these in the actual adventure mode where you're unlocking different areas of the map or something. And Kirby can absorb new enemy powers. He can switch between abilities during combat. Players can customize Kirby's loadout for each battle by combining dual ability modes, such as like ice and fire, and similar to how they did in Kirby and the Crystal Shards. It could feature, the world, it could feature a large interconnected world that has like overworld exploration and platforming with Dreamland and other iconic locations like Halberd, Ripple Star, Nutty Noon would be fully explorable with each zone containing puzzles, hidden areas and side quests. So not like anything super new, but just expanding what they already have established for the properties. And as players progress through the game, they could be able to level up Kirby, his HP, attack power, defense, and speed. And the copy abilities can even have their own upgrade system the same way they did in Kirby and the Forgotten Land. The crystal hearts could drive the main storyline. Each heart would be guarded by bosses who represent the corrupted elements of Dreamland, like, like Dark Matter or Nightmare. And then we'll have side quests and, of course, mini games, because that's what Kirby's known for. Obviously, the boss battles, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna weigh in because every time they've done boss battles in a Kirby game, it's always been epic. So you guys can just do do your same things. Consume, of course, some consumable items could be back, like maximum tomatoes for healing or energy drinks for temporary stat boosts. It could play a crucial role in like tough battles or boss fights. Obviously, it'll be the signature bright, cheery, vibrant aesthetic with lush, hand painted environments. Whimsical characters or smooth animations. Maybe we can go back to another style like Canvas Cursed or uh, Epic Yarn and do something more creative. But I definitely think for a first Kirby RPG, we could just do regular, simple Kirby design. Um, overall, it would blend lightheartedness and charm of the Kirby franchise with the deeper mechanics of an RPG, offering character progression strategic combat and rich world exploration so so the core of kirby's abilities the beloved cast of characters and iconic worlds can all be in this game <sighs> please nintendo do it so i kind of did this one for the meme uh but this this is the nintendo switch 2 video game yeah this would be such a fun game and i bet everybody would play it you basically get to create your own rumors and make up stuff online and then you could retweet other people's things and make thing and the more people you fool that this is real the more points you get and then if you're lucky one of the boss battles is held in one of the nintendo conference rooms where quote unquote the new switch is being revealed 
And then the very end of the game will end with Shigeru Miyamoto uh, tweeting that this is 100% possible, but the game is left on a to be continued as it doesn't come out within the first game. And I obviously I can't announce the second game because who knows when it will come out! And for more 2000s content, you can subscribe to Johnny2000. That's right, and you can find more stuff. And I will maybe probably... And I will probably have more videos in the future to show you things that you will probably never get. Yeah, overall, it would just be so fun for these games to have come out. But obviously, I don't think it's super realistic. And I just want you to know that even the last one was kind of a joke. So, uh, but I don't know. It's at least fun to just imagine it. You know, we have an imagination, right? I mean... Because of the drapes, I definitely think one of us doesn't have an imagination, but I definitely think these games would be amazing to have come out, especially for somebody who's grown up in the 2000s. I would have bought these games twice. But yeah, thank you guys so much. Like, comment, subscribe. I don't know, report. Why not?